if I look back, say, a year and a half ago, two years, and think about Cheers, I couldn't have imagined what kind of impact it would have on me. Long story short, I started to watch Frasier. Well, I binge watched Frasier and then knew that I had to go and watch Cheers. And I watched Cheers and I did not stop watching Cheers until it was finished. I don't know how long it took me to watch um, all 11 seasons, but it, it was not a long length of time, put it that way. And now that I finished reviewing all 11 seasons, one season at a time, I am in theory going back to rewatch every episode and review them. We'll see how long this takes. But hopefully it won't take that long, particularly as I'm champing to get to uh, Rebecca's episodes because I love her. But I decided to obviously start with the pilot. And I've actually seen this one several times. Um, because as soon as I finished watching Cheers, I kind of went back and watched half of the first season again. And then I decided to stop so that I could go back and review it. I'll be honest, the pilot, when I watched it at the time, I loved it. Of course I did. It got me hooked. It drew me in. I didn't stop watching it. But having seen it three or maybe even four times now, it doesn't actually live up to the quality of every episode thereafter. And that's weird because Cheers doesn't actually take any time at all to find its feet. This first episode is funny, but I think watching it back, so it's a very different kind of experience of watching it for the first time and then watching it after you've watched the entire show. And I think the main reason for that is because our opinions of Diane change quite a lot. We develop a deeper understanding of Sam as a character, so looking back at him here, it's easy to forget how much hair he used to have. <laughs> Sam has changed a lot. Now, I know it's over the course of 11 years, give or take, but I forgot how much hair he used to have. It's so fluffy and it just feels really weird. Whereas Diane, not so much. So if you haven't seen this first episode, in fact, let's double back. If you've never heard of Cheers, it's a sitcom um, initially released in 1983, which is set in a pub called Cheers. The pub is owned by ex-Red Sox star um, Sam Malone. And in his first episode, Sam meets Diane, Diane Chambers, who is who goes into Cheers with her fiancé, Sumner Sloan. And Sumner is just going to visit his ex-wife to get the engagement ring. And then they're going off um, on holiday to get married. But things don't necessarily go to plan. I will keep that spoiler free for the moment. Towards the end of this, I will share my thoughts on kind of the outcome of the first episode, which I love. The final scene just amuses me so much. So that setting up works really well because we get to find out who Diane is because Sam keeps asking her questions and that works really well. We get to find out who Sam is because there's one particular moment where Carla is like so confused that Diane doesn't know who Sam is and isn't aware that he used to play for the Red Sox and he was, you know, Sam made him alone, this big sports star. So I think the way we learn about the characters is really effective. Carla's entrance is brilliant. One of my favourite Carla scenes in this first episode is in this first episode when she comes storming in. She's late, she's ranting on about her children, she's very um, forward with what she says, she doesn't give chance a chance for Sam to speak. We learn very quickly that she is to the point, she is direct, she doesn't hold anything back, and she is a mother with, we can assume, several children. At this point, I can't remember how many children she has. I'm trying to not spoil things for future episodes. So her introduction, I thought, was brilliant. Coach? <laughs> Coach, I thought, was absolutely brilliant. I loved how he kept agreeing and disagreeing with people. And I just thought we definitely got a very clear understanding of the kind of scatterbrain individual that he is. Um, a very easy character to get on with. Um, Nicholas Colasanto gave a brilliant performance um, of Rhea Perlman plays um, Carla. Norm. I feel like I've been building up to this moment for my entire life. Um, I'm sure you will be the same once you've watched Cheers for two or three episodes. Every time Norm enters a room, you say Norm. And I said it a little bit too loudly with this first episode. It's like I've been building it up for so long and I got really so excited by that. So that's something that really amused me a lot. Norm, Norm in this episode is not actually that great. Um, I love him. 
but and, and George Wen's performance was obviously brilliant. But Norm comes across as quite interested. Um, he asks Diane a question. I think he asks her what book she's reading. And really, Norm, further down the line, just wouldn't care. Norm just kind of exists in his own world. And I feel like maybe it took a few episodes for Norm's character to truly be found. But I still love him. Cliff, Cliff, um, we get kind of a whistle-stop introduction to, but you can tell straight away he's starting to talk about women's perspiration habits. You know the kind of character you're getting with Cliff, and I think for an introduction from John Ratzenberger, absolutely spot on. Really thought, yep, yeah, that's how we're getting introduced to Cliff. With regards to um, Ted Danson and Shelley Long, straight away there's an on-screen chemistry between them. You can tell how fantastic, how fantastically annoyed by Sam Diane is, and I think the way they respond to each other works really well. Even though I'm not really a big fan of Sam and Diane as a couple, I know, I know, but I'm not. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, I see too much of myself in Diane, so I get annoyed by Diane, but I love Sam, so I want Sam to be with somebody who doesn't annoy me. But even in this, I love their on-screen chemistry. I think it works really well. So a spoiler with regards to how it ends. Of course, we know that Sumner Sloan has left and Diane isn't getting married and she has no job. So she ends up working at the bar. And just the way it ended with her telling her life story to this, I think, German couple. Were they German? and um, who didn't understand a word she said, I just, it just sets us up for everything. Diane is going to go on about things. Nobody within the walls of Cheers is going to pay attention or understand or care. And I just think this is it. This is how it's going to go. And I love it. And it's beautiful. It's funny. It's a great introduction to the characters. The entire thing is set inside this pub. Um, in fact, for the first few seasons, the entire show is set inside the pub. I assume it was a budgeting thing. But it does, as, as you may know, as the episodes go on, it does um, expand out to other locations. It's amazing. I love it. It makes me feel... It makes me feel like part of something. Do you know when you become a fan of a show and you suddenly find yourself part of that fandom? With Cheers, it's a bit different because the Cheers fandom... Well, Cheers hasn't aired in just shy of 30 years. And... It's weird to be part of a fandom for something that aired before I was born, but it's it's beautiful. And if anybody ever wants to talk Cheers with me, please message me. It makes me happy. It is my happy place. I think the fact that it aired before I was born and kind of just stopped airing when I was born means that it's a complete escape for me because it all happened before my time. And it means that I can escape into that. It's escaping into the past, even though it is relatively recent past and all of the cast members um save for nicholas colasanto um are still alive but episode one absolutely love it brilliant introduction if you haven't seen cheers please watch the pilot um i don't think i mentioned it's called give me a ring sometime it's lovely i i was hooked in straight away and once i started i i could not stop